If you are going for your cloud interview for a role such as cloud engineer or cloud architect, it is almost certain that you will be asked something around scaling. And by default, intuitively, we start answering this question, uh, understanding scaling from a VM perspective. So we'll say something like scaling is, you know, you can implement auto scaling to increase the capacity of a VM by adding CPU or something as the load increases. That is normal beginner stuff. And this comes under infrastructure as a service. We have done it multiple times on-prem and it is very very straightforward on cloud as well but that is where interviewer is expecting a layered answer because when an interviewer asks you about scaling it is not specifically asking about a virtual machine it is asking about different cloud stack you know which we use on cloud and how you can uh, you know strategically understand how scaling works in all these different stacks so one is vm which we all know but the other one is serverless so serverless comes under function as a service okay and we'll understand uh, you know how we can do scaling in here but when we say serverless we are talking about aws lambda azure functions google cloud functions all these kind of things which we use and how scaling you know can be implemented here and the third facet of this answer would be revolving around kubernetes because you will be deploying microservices using kubernetes and this will come under container as a service and how you will implement scaling in this scenario so we'll try to break down how we can answer this question better uh, and uh, what kind of strategies we can deploy in VM, serverless versus Kubernetes. And by the end of this video, if you watch till the end, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to answer this question like an intermediate to advanced cloud engineer or architect. And not only that, this will also clarify some of the concepts for you as well. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's start with our traditional virtual machine scaling or VM scaling architecture. And generally you will have a load balancer and that load balancer will, uh, you know, distributing the load to for example three virtual machines and in cloud you have this concept of auto scaling group which is like you create a group and you define that you know how to scale or descale that particular group based on the request coming from the load balancer in aws we call this ec2 auto scaling in azure the same concept is called as vm scale set vmss and in gcp google cloud you call it as managed instance group MIG. Same concept, different names. So you define that, okay, minimum you need two VMs. Desired is always three uh, VM nodes and maximum it go to five or 10, whatever, based on your requirements. And the trigger could be, for example, CPU. So if the CPU load is greater than 80%, you know that you now want to add one more VM here. Okay. And this could be VM4, for example, if the load is increasing or if the load is below 20, you know that you don't need to waste resources for three VMs. You can cut down and delete one particular VM from this particular auto scaling group. But this is very reactive in nature. If you see, even the interviewer would ask why you want to be so reactive. And that's why you have this concept of scheduled scaling. For big companies, they know, for example, banks. Banks know that uh, at 9 a.m. the banks will open and the transactions will start and you know, you might see some spike. So they can schedule the scaling and they can be in a position where the system does not take too much time to scale itself. So it is kind of a warm up which they do. And that scaling can be scheduled another way is instead of being reactive based on cpu load for example you can have and this can impress your interviewer as well you can use the word target tracking using alb request alb which is your auto load balancer how many requests are coming okay you can keep a track of it and if it goes beyond a certain point you know that it is now the time to scale up so that is more intelligent way of uh, doing scaling so this is what interviewer wants you to answer they do not want you to uh, mug up the definitions and uh, spill it out the interviewer wants you to show the experience which you carry which you know on the ground so this is vm scaling architecture now let's understand how the same scaling strategy can be applied rather differently on for example serverless let's check that out friends before we move ahead if you are someone who's looking to start his or her career on cloud especially on aws which is the leading cloud provider in the market then i would definitely recommend you checking our aws cloud jumpstart program which is very good for beginners you just go and check the link in the description see whatever we have covered it it has more than 15 plus hours of content and not only that we have also added a very special module which will tell you how you can use generative ai effectively in any of your cloud specific jobs be it preparing for the interview preparing your cv making architecture solving different kinds of problems and how you can use things like prompt chaining to get better output 
from uh, Claude from ChatGPT. So it's a very, very good course. More than 500 students have already got great benefits from it. So I will hugely, hugely recommend that you check it out. And apart from that, I also have a free guide, which is a AWS cheat sheet, which you can download for free. So go check it out. Now coming to serverless scaling architecture, serverless is very different. Serverless functions like AWS Lambda, Azure functions, Google Cloud functions. These functions are, you know, function as a service, as I said. So you don't need to do anything you just have to tell these functions what it has to do but it will have a very very clear task and a goal which it will execute and then again go back to sleep that is what function does so google cloud function azure function aws lambda all will you know execute a request for example take for example uber so every passenger when he or she logs a request to get a cab that cab in itself is a very isolated execution for that particular user that particular ride will be very very specific to that particular passenger so that's what serverless function does and you can figure multiple uh, times a single function based on uh, whatever uh, you know requirements you have but how does scaling works here because for example if there if generally you will have a api gateway or http request sending these requests to the serverless function so would you be spinning up everything right then and there scaling do you think that is good yes it could be but then what if suddenly there is a new year party and it has just ended and people are coming out of the nightclub and there is a long queue of people asking for cabs but the uber drivers are nowhere near to that particular location that is where the question will come and that you have to answer in the interview and this concept which the interviewer is trying to discuss with you is cold start versus warm start so you have to understand guys that every serverless function will spin up its own environment it will need its own resources and it will need its own time to spin up okay that particular environment where your code will run so if you have very low latency requirement where you need very quick response from the function then you cannot afford a cold start because it has a lag it will add some latency which will not be significant if it is not a mission critical function which you are doing but if it is a mission critical function where you cannot afford a uh, huge delays then you have to de decide between cold versus warm start so warm start is like asking the uber drivers to be there around that particular postcode at 11 30 or 12 when you know exactly that the party is about to get over you will ask uber or you will send the information to the uber drivers that stay somewhere near there because there is a huge influx of requests coming and you should be there to accept it so that is what is warm start is in warm start yes it will come with an additional cost but if it is a mission critical application you have to take that trade-off okay cold start will be cheaper warm start will be costlier but it will uh, save you a lot of time to spin up uh, your serverless functions now when it comes to provisioning it every cloud has its own way of doing it so provisioned concurrency this is a term which is used in aws where you provision a certain level of concurrency for these functions and it helps you spin up or trigger these functions quicker as your has a premium plan which is always on so that is how they do it and in gcp it is minimum instances setting now these things keep on changing its names and different things are coming up so i might have missed some other features as well but every cloud provides this one one way or the other so when you are talking about scaling in a serverless environment these are the things which you have to explain and this will show that you understand how scaling works in a serverless architecture now with this being said uh, let's go to kubernetes scaling architecture so coming to the most advanced part of this particular video which is kubernetes scaling architecture now kubernetes could be a bit overwhelming uh, for many of us but i'll try to simplify it we're not going to understand kubernetes uh, in this particular video but just an aspect of scaling so you need to know a bit about it to be able to understand but i'll try to simplify it so basically in kubernetes architecture you're gonna multiple kubernetes clusters and within those clusters you will have node and within node you will have pods now you know one particular pod would be running one particular instance of your container image in here okay so generally the concept in kubernetes is you use horizontal pod or, or scalar which is also called as hpa and hpa has certain definitions or metrics to monitor and when it sees that okay for example a particular pod you know is crossing the memory which is needed or it is exceeding that particular uh, total memory threshold then it might uh, spin up another pod here somewhat similar to what uh, we have been learning previously but scaling up or scaling down is done by horizontal pod auto scalar but this is where the trickiest part comes in because interviewer might ask you a follow 
of question. She might ask that, okay, you can scale the pod based on your horizontal pod auto scaler, but what if your overall node itself is uh, undersized? or running out of capacity so in there you have to understand that in uh, you know a node for example is actually you can take for example is a vm of sort so you can say that it is a kubernetes node so for example this is node one where pod one and pod two are running okay i'll just separate it and in here in node two your pod 3 and pod 4 are running and suddenly if there is a need to uh, you know in spin up pod 5 it will go into waiting or pending state because there is no more capacity for example in node 1 80 percent and here 90 percent capacity cpu is already used for example or memory is already used where pod 5 will come in that's where a different concept comes in which is at a node level scaling so right now we've understood like at pod level you would use horizontal pod auto scaler but then if it is at a node level then kubernetes provide you with a component which is cluster auto scaler which will actually you know spin up a new node in itself if required so if required it will add a new node and then that particular pod 5 will be accommodated within this particular node which is called as cluster auto scaler or there is a new uh, utility which is faster than cluster auto scaler which is called as carpenter these are the two concepts you, ha you have to understand because interviewer might try to understand whether you know pod level scaling versus node level scaling and then there is another advanced concepts which is which is called as kda which is kubernetes event driven architecture i guess if i'm not wrong and basically it is scaling based on a certain event so for example you can connect it and configure it with sqs which is a simply simple queue service amazon simple queue service so for example if you are feeding your kubernetes cluster via a message broker or a messaging queue and if that particular queue crosses a certain threshold then again the scaling could be triggered so this is an advanced concept we are not going to dig into this but even if you can name this during the interview then it will make a good impression yeah these are certain uh, things which you can talk about when it comes to scaling in kubernetes the idea is this guys that when you are trying to answer it try not to be very yes or no kind of an answer try to understand the layered question and try to answer it step by step ask follow-up questions so for for example if the interviewer asks about okay what do you understand by scaling you can answer with a basic definition but then you can also ask follow-up question that could you please specify that when you say scaling scaling what on cloud that matters a lot in order to answer it correctly so are you scaling a virtual machine are you scaling a serverless function are you scaling a kubernetes cluster what you are scaling and based on that when you try to understand and give your response then it adds a lot of weightage and it separates you from a beginner versus someone who's more advanced expert kind of but again you have to do the heavy lifting understand it try to do it yourself and then i think that will be a real value add so i hope it was a useful video guys and uh, let me know if you want these kind of videos in the comment give like a lot of you haven't subscribed yet i've been running these videos for six years now i do feel that that uh, if you subscribe to the channel it will really help so do consider subscribing if you're new and until next time keep learning keep growing keep sharing and stay blessed bye for now